so we're starting recording this is either going to go really well or it's going to be a disaster um, so i have a here's the thing um every every person in this class who needs the 2d face needs it in a different way i'm going to show you a handful of ways of doing this the last one being probably the most complicated right but there are simpler ways of doing it depending on what you need. So I'm showing you the most complicated way. Be thinking along the way if this is actually something you need. Keep in mind that pretty much what I'm showing you is that any texture can be animated as part of a rig, not just as part of a, um, a sequence, right? So um, the reason I, I say that is because um, you may need this for other instances, right? Let's say you needed a digital cock that you wanted to be able to switch at a very certain time in your animation, but you weren't sure exactly when that was, then you can set up this rig to go from you know, 8.15 to 8.16 at a very specific point in your animation. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, a couple of different methods um, on how to do this and then a couple of different, uh, and then pretty much what will happen is I'll sit down with you one at a time to help you work out which one is, is best for you, right? Um, you may be able to just watch this and be like, oh, I know exactly how I'm going to do this. But if this are, were the character face I was going for, this one's actually kind of complicated, um, believe it or not, because I have this broken up into multiple layers. Um, and if I go in here to my move tool, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave auto select on. I have an eyebrow layer, right? And with that eyebrow layer, I have multiple different variations of the eyebrow um, that I could turn on and off. So there's like four different eyebrows. And I want to be able to move the eyebrows up and down when I animate them, right? Um, my eyes, I have um, this eye dot right here, which is so my character can kind of look around a little bit, right? Um, and then I also have two different versions of this eye shape here, which is a blink and an open, right? Now, if my eyes are on when my character blinks, it doesn't make any sense, right? So I want to be able to turn those off as well. Um, so we got these layers. And then if I just turn off all of that, just so you can see, I have a variety of mouths. And it's probably not even all of the ones I need. So I have my just open-ish, happy-ish mouth. Um, smile, um, sort of a sad, um, and also sort of like that, this is more of like the MB shape. Sometimes you need a smaller one of those, like a, a more like a P shape. Okay. Um, made like a smaller U shape, um, a super small U shape, and then an even smaller U shape. Um, and then I added, this is sort of an FV, um, I realized earlier um, I'm missing a T and an S in here. I was just sort of throwing some of these out as some options to switch through, right? Now, um, when I made these, I made these just from scratch. In fact, I drew these on the iPad. Um, I, I just popped into Procreate, made a, a layer that, that kind of worked, and just drew all these different shapes because I was not near my computer at the time. Um, more than likely, you'll be doing this in Photoshop or, or something like that um, on one of these Cintiqs. Keep in mind, that's not the only option. You could also do it in something like Illustrator. Like, there's lots of different ways you could, you could do these shapes. Um, so there's two different things that, two different methods you could go about using to animate um, 2D animate or 2D facial expressions. Um, in your 3D scene. Now, probably the the older, more like um, it's almost like a workaround would be to animate the entire emotion or the entire expressions in a 2D animation software, even Photoshop, right? Export that out as a long image sequence and just let that play out at the right time in your 3D scene, right? So if, you're, if your character started talking on frame 30 in your 3D scene, you would do a 2D animation, 
where the character is completely still for 30 frames and starts talking on frame 31, right? And then you do the lip sync to that, and then you just export out an image sequence of like 70 pieces, or oh, what, 700 frames, however many frames you need, and all of those frames line up in your 3D animation as well. Problem with that is, is if you make a mistake and you're like, oh, I need to change that timing, um, or oh, that's not reading from that camera angle like that, it's not very easy to make those changes, right? You have to go back into 2D, change it, re-export that entire image sequence and see if it worked. Um, so if you decide you want to do that, let's say you have just very limited facial animation on your character, right? Like it just goes from like sad to happy at some point, right? Um, the, maybe the 2D method would be the easier way of doing that. And so um, it's all going to be based off of your character's UVs. Right. So how I would consider doing that, um, let's say this is my, my character head, right? Um, I'm just going to go up here, Windows, um, Modeling Editor, UV Editor, and this is my UVs, right? The face where I want this to appear, right in there, we'll see that most of my animation needs to be right there, right? Um, and so what I can do is... Just select this as a mesh and go edit, I'm sorry, um, it's under view tools. Oh, where is it at? Texture? <laughs> Who knows? UV snapshot, it's under image. Uh, they move it every version of this. And I would export this out as a PNG, right? Um, right now I'm just doing this to my default folder. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do this to the desktop just so I can find it. We'll call this UVs. Save. Apply and close. There we go. And so now I get this UVs image here where we can kind of see that. And again, this box down here is where all of my facial expressions would be happening, primarily toward the center of this, right? Um, so I can take this into Photoshop, texture it, draw a couple of face shapes here and switch in and out. Or what I could do is take that UV into something like Toon Boom Harmony. Okay. Now the images that I exported out just now were um, 2048 by 2048. So let's see if I have that on here. There's 4K. Uh, doesn't seem like it gives me that option. So I think I can do a custom one. Um, what I'm going to do is with add one. I'm going to do 2048. My number pad 2048. 2048. There we go. One to one frames per second. Maya's going to be at 24, so I also want this. Um, I'll call this. Um, texture map, say Maya texture map. And so now I've made a new resolution. I'll hit create and go ahead and say um, create Maya texture scene. So we hit create scene. Take it a second. And I put that in my documents. So if I go look at my documents as it creates it, there it goes. Um, you'll see there's my there's my 2048 by 2048 right um, and in my documents there's this Maya texture folder here where all of my my stuff is going to end up right so I can import in I think file import images browse and I'm going to import in that image that was on my desktop UVs open. Um, create single layer named UVs. That looks good. Hit OK. So there we go. And so now if I wanted to texture this, this is just one long, or if I wanted to animate this, this is just one long drawing, right, that's on this UVs layer. You see it kind of goes away right there. Right? But I could extend this out to 150. Um, if I hit F5 here, it will extend that out to the end. And then on this drawing layer, I'll go ahead and lock my UVs layer. On my drawing layer, I could start drawing the facial animation I need, right? So let's say for frame one, um, I'm gonna do this super simple with my mouse. Frame one, 
he's smiling, right? Um, and I want him to stay that way for 10 frames, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and go out here to frame 150, hit F5. And so now I'm continuing this frame for 150 frames, he never changes, right? So no real reason for an image sequence, but let's say on frame 10, he blinks. Right? Now, if I just go here to frame 10 and start drawing, um, you see what I did is I actually changed that image all the way through. So what I need to do is on frame 10, I need to click this button right here, which is duplicate drawing. So what it's going to do is it's going to cut that drawing, right? Now I have a new frame right there. And if I draw on it, I can, let's say, we'll um, erase part of this. make it a little bit more like he's starting to say ooh right so now he does this right now to me that may be like a little too fast maybe like starting to go into that a little too quickly so i could do like a little transition one in here if i wanted to break that right um and do a uh sort of a ghosting of what the before and after looks like so i can see what that looks like uh, maybe I don't want to see what the before looks like. And then I can start to kind of erase a little bit here to start getting toward that shape. So now my animation does that. And then maybe by here, I wanted it a completely new drawing where I erase all of this and he just has this ooh shape, right? And so now I get this transition of this. Now, let's say, um, let's say I needed to go back to this pose later though. I mean, I can always copy this frame, right? I can right click on this and say, um, copy cells from timeline. And then go out here to frame 20 and right click and say, um, is it paste cells in timeline? And it will paste that frame back in there. But I'm going to show you a faster way to do lip sync. Um, in my library, you'll notice that there's my face, right? And if I go over here to frame 20, and, or look at this frame, there's my face. Look at my drawing number here, right? So each of these change. Whenever I'm on one of these different drawings, I have drawing one, I have drawing three, I have drawing two, I have drawing uh, four, I have drawing five, right? And if I need drawing two again over here, I can just slide this and it'll plug drawing two in here. So how we usually do lip sync in um, 2D animation is you draw out a series of the different faces you'll need. Um, on like the first five or six frames, um, then those will be saved in your library and you can go through here and just dial those in one at a time, right? If you go all the way to zero, it wipes out the rest of the frames there. Right? So I can just kind of go through here, set whatever I need, whenever I need it, right? You can have a timeline in here too, so if you're needing audio for a certain time. But, um, but now if I hit play on this from the beginning, you're going to see. Right. Now, that's a very limited number of frames that I did that way. But I have 150 frames here. What I would do from here is hide my UVs layer, right? Go into File, and it's Export. And there's this Render Write node. So first I need to check my right node and see what it's actually going to render. So if I go to my node view, right, right here, you're gonna see there's my drawings that I've been working on, there's my UVs that was my template, and then there's my right node. So I wanna see what's in that right node. And the way I do that is I click this little plus sign here and add my layers property. And you'll see that what it's going to do is it's going to write, it's gonna put it into a folder called frames um, it's going to name it final dash. It's going to, you know, give me some numbers to it. And the type of file it's going to give me is a TGA. Okay. Now, a targa is a, um, 
it is an image it can have transparency but it doesn't always right if, i can set this to all sorts of different images ps uh png psd bmp jpg so if i just did a jpg sequence right and i went file export render write nodes it's going to render all 150 frames of this i hit okay it's kicking them out and um There we go. So if I go into my documents folder now and look in here, Maya texture, it's in this frames folder. I have a bunch of black JPEG, JPEGs. Now the reason these are black is because even though I drew this in black um, and it looks like my background is gray, my background is actually black, right? So if I want this to have a different color on it, I could add a new layer in here going to do a color card work let's add I'm not seeing it there we go um, and then on this color card I can oh I guess I need to extend it out there um, on this color card um, if I double click I can change the color to whatever color I want. Right. So there we go. Now if I go file, export, render, write node, it's going to write over all of those files. And what you're going to see is it's going to export a single image for every frame of my animation. So here they are. Perfect. What's happening here? I connect that. For some reason, this UV is apparent of that. Um, why is it doing it that way? Let me delete these. Sorry. Um, this is the color card we need. There we go. File, let's see if I hit render, that's what it should look like. File, export, render right node. Okay. I can explain what happened. Basically what happened is it put that color card under the composite node instead of the right node. Um, I don't know why. Um, this is correct. And so now, I go in here to my frames you'll see that as I sort of skip through there it has a different frame for every every piece right so this is a way you could do this in 2d animation kind of quickly um, and so now if I went back to my box um, we already kind of saw how to do this right I assign a new material I'll go shader AI standard surface I go to my color channel, I hit files, I choose that image sequence, which of course you'll want all this to be inside of your project folder. I choose that image sequence, open, um, you'll see that first things first we can see it on there but if I use my timeline nothing changes. right? Um, if I click this use image sequence then what we're going to get is So that's a little tedious to go back and forth between those. Like if you know something important happens at a very specific time, you have to figure out what time that is in Maya, go back to Toon Boom, make sure that you hit that face shape at that point. But this requires almost no rigging, right? This is just drawing a bunch of images. And this will work. Um, it requires a little more planning on your part, a little less technical. So I wanted to give that to you as an option, if, especially I think if you just have it changing uh, textures a few times. But if you're trying to like lip sync something, like this may be really difficult to do it this way. Um, so let me show you sort of the alternate way using this, this Photoshop image, right, that I have with all these different shapes. Um, the other thing about this method is whatever it is I put in my background, 
Um, like, let's say this works fine if your character is on a solid color, but if your character's texture is more realistic, um, like uh, Eli, yours is, yours is on that concrete, um, or if it has some other pattern on it, um, then getting that face shape to change dynamically on top of that texture um, means that when you export that out, it's like you're having a huge number of textures. Every one of them have that concrete in the background. And sometimes I, I want to be able to be dynamic about it. I want to be able to raise the mouth up and down um, wherever I want it to go on top of that texture. So I'm going to try to show you a, a more complicated way of rigging this. Um, but it's really a more complicated way of shading this. So I'm going to right click on this, assign a new material, shader, AI standard surface. How many of you have taken lighting and rendering with Marty or with anybody? Okay, cool. So some of this is not going to be completely like out of your realm of understanding. Like this is going to make sense. Um, Cause the biggest thing we need to know is this thing right here, like our, our um, hyper shade. Okay, so it's this little blue blue button there. We open this up. Um, I'm just going to kind of pull it back and forth here here and there. Um, I need to be able to see this my my node tab, right? Which I guess I can I can probably do that without the whole hyper shade open. Um, kill that part maybe, and then just use what's open over here for that. Um, so this is my AI standard material, right? Um, I'll go ahead and name that um, face. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply a, um, a different kind of texture to this or material to this, right? I'm gonna apply, I did an AI standard surface. Um, actually, texture is what I'm gonna apply, not a material. Um, and this is the face. I'm gonna click this little thing under color right here. And I want this to have like a checkerboard pattern on it, um, but then I want to be able to animate the face that I had in Photoshop on top of that checkerboard pattern. So if I go to just checker, then I only have one color. I need multiple colors in here. I need um, one layer for the mouth, I need one for the eyes, I need one for um, the eyebrows. So I'm gonna look for layers. So there's a couple of options under here. There's this layered texture, there's a layered shader, um, and then um, there's a kind of a couple of other ways we can do it on top of that. But right now, let's try this layered texture. Right? There's another way we can do this, and I'll just show you that now, which is if I hit assign new material, there's also an, a, an Arnold shader that's called, um, is it? The mix shader or is the pass through? I think it's mix shader. No, I'm sorry, there it is. AI layered shader. Um, so both of these kind of do the same thing, and I'll kind of go back in a minute and show you how this one works as well. Um, but right now I'm going to try this AI standard surface, and then I'm going to map in a layer texture on top of that. So now this works in um, a couple of different ways. Um, first thing is if I right click on face and say graph network you'll see that what happens is um, I have my AI standard surface here and then I have this layered texture and then there's this series of inputs under here right and for each input there is a color an alpha a blend mode and is visible right so let's look at our first layer in here, our first input, which is this green color, right? So I can do um, my checker pattern instead of green on this. So I'm going to click my checkerboard and um, just choose checker. And so now this first layer in here on my layered shader, this right here, is this checker pattern. You see if I mouse over it, it says checker, right? Um, it has all of the material properties. I can change the color of this, right? Um, and I can go into place 2D shader and I can play, um, set this to like, let's do something more like 10 by 10. Let's do a little bit more than that, maybe 12. 12 by 12, right? And so I have this nice, uh, 
it's not that nice either. 15. There we go. So this is what my um, checkerboard material is looking like on there right now, right? Um, now, what I want is one of my other layers in here. I want it to be um, my character's face, or at least part of the face. So let's start with the mouth, OK? So um, on my layered texture here, I can just click and it'll add a new layer. Now, the one that is on top is the one that is furthest to the left. So to move that, I have to middle click and drag it over to here. And so now you'll see that it's green on top and the checker is underneath that. And if I lower my alpha, I can uncheck that or I can set like additive I can do multiply, I can do difference, whatever. Over, though, means it's going to go over top of it, right? So that's what I'm going to leave my blend mode on is over. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to start looking for a file. Now, right now, in my PSD file, I just have all of these layers, right? So I could map it into the PSD file, but I think that's going to be a little more difficult. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to export out all of my layers from this PSD file. So file, export, and then I'm going to say layers to files. So click that. The file type I want is to be PNG. Let's do PNG 8. I do want transparency. And the place I'm going to put that, I'll, I'll go ahead and leave it in the folder I'm in right now and then bring that back out later. Um, so if I hit run, what it's going to do is it's going to open up each of these layers export it out. And if I go up here to my face rig, you'll see that it's making a layer for each of these, right? Okay. Now, the thing about that is I don't I need to check them first. That is not what I wanted. Let's try that one more time. File. So what I want though is I want it to always be the same shape. For some reason, this cropped each of them. So let's try that again. File, um, export layers to files. Um, trim layers. I'm going to uncheck that. Run. Let it do it again. So that means now I have all these layers. I'm going to copy those, put those on my desktop so I can use them a little faster. Uh, probably not my desktop. I'll, I haven't set a project in here, which is bad habit, but new. We'll call these face images. Paste those in there, right? So first thing I want to do is I want to go through and name all of these, but I want to name them in a way that makes sense. Right? So I'm going to right click on this. I'll, or I'm sorry, not right click, just click on it. I'm going to call this mmouth.0001. Um, okay? And now to rename these a little quicker, you can just copy that and then just start pasting this in here, and just changing that last number, right? Renaming takes a minute.
I'll call this one eyeball. I'll call this one instead of mouth 0001. I'll call it. I want to do this one two instead of one. And then I'll do the other one as one because it's the one I'm going to use the most. I don't know what that one is. It's an empty layer. So that must be, I must have created an empty layer in there. And then I'll do the same thing with these. Um, whoa, what did you just do? There you go. Oh, it's not recognized in transparency. Um, yeah, here we go. We'll call this brow 0001. So these are all the like, correctly named. And so the cool thing is you'll see it now, like it'll play them in order, right? Like this is the order in which it would cycle through the mouths. And um, sort of the same with you know, the eyeballs are by themselves, but the eyes, we got that one and that one. Um, so like all of this is um, named in a way that it works like a sequence. So if I go to this layer now, I'm going to add a new um, file to this, right? So I'm going to click on that. I'm just going to say File. I'm going to go ahead and choose, um, just to start here, I'm going to go ahead and choose Mouth 0001. When I hit OK, I get this, which is not what I wanted, right? Now this is where we need to start sort of bouncing back and forth between Arnold and Maya. So this is one of the limitations of this is that I kind of have to test this pretty often in um, Arnold um, just to, to see how it's working. So let me go ahead and get a, because what I see in my viewport here isn't always accurate. Often it is, but not always. Um, so if I go to Arnold, uh, I'm going to put in an area light or a sky dome light just so I can see it. And I render this. This is what I get, right? So it's recognizing that there's nothing in the area out here, but it's not recognizing my transparency. It's also not lining up in my box in any way that makes sense, right? Um, so again, I could at any point go to that material um, and turn off that, um, that layer. We can still see the checkerboard under there. I wanna be able to see the checkerboard through the parts around the face. The other thing is I want my UVs to line up with this in a way that uh, makes sense. So it's not going to make sense on the checkerboard though if I change them. So let's, let's just take these one at a time. First, let's figure out how to get that transparency on there. Okay. So um, right click, graph network. So this is everything, right? And so what you'll see, mouth PNG, uh, my color is mapping into my color input zero, right? But my alpha is not. So that means I need to take my alpha, pipe that into there. And so what we should get now, there we go. So now we're seeing the mouth layer over top of my checkerboard layer, right? How many of you have done this before and used the layer texture before in Arnold? Okay. So this is a really nice feature. Like let's say you just want to add um, something on there. Problem is, is my UVs are not laying out on it correctly, right? If I go in here to my UV editor, win, uh, Windows Modeling Editor, UV Editor, right? Um, I just gotta choose my model on it. Uh, you'll see that that's how the mouth is laying out there. Now, ideally, I guess I could go in there and resize each of those faces and fit them into that UV box. That's how you can do it with Foresight, right? 
Um, but sometimes you want certain things to have a lot of detail. When I do that, if I scale that down, I'm using fewer pixels to get my drawings, right? Right now I'm kind of maximizing how many pixels are coming out of it, or how many pixels are going into the drawings, so I can get a little bit more detail in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a second set of UVs for this, okay? That gets a little confusing. That's one of the reasons, like, this is, this is I'm telling you, this is a deep one. Like, you're gonna have to follow this video again later, I think. So right now, my UVs look like this, and you'll see that we have UV sets, right? Currently, we have map one, right? Um, I can create an, a new UV set if I wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is create an empty UV set, um, like that. And now you'll see that my UV sets are map one and UV set, right? Um, there's also this UV set editor here where I have map one and UV set and if I click on UV set here, you'll see that still the same texture, there's no UVs for this, okay? Um, I can rename these too. So let's just call this um, default, okay? And then we'll call this UV set, the one that doesn't have anything on it yet, um, we'll call it, um, let's call it mount. Um, so for the mouth, I want that mouth to line up in certain parts, I'm going to minimize a bunch of stuff here. I want that mouth to line up on certain parts of my model, right? Really, I want it to just line up on these bottom faces. So let me go back to face right here. Like ideally, I want it to just be something that kind of fits in there. Right. Um, so what I can do is do a set of UVs that line up with that. Right? So I would go to under modeling, UVs, and then I'm going to use um, planar mapping. If I hit planar, it projects that in this location. Right. And I can sort of scale this kind of line up with my mouth. So now my mouth is going to fit in those UVs. Right? If I close that and hit Arnold Render, let's open that up again, hit Render, it still isn't showing that change, right? Because as it is right now, Maya is still looking for that UV set on our face. Right? It's still looking here at my previous UV set. So if I go to here, um, oh, this is the part that I, UV coordinates. Okay, yeah. So it's really thinking that the default UV set is how it wants me to apply that mouth texture on there. Now to fix that is a little bit complicated. Um, are a little bit different because there's this secret, like you would think it would just be hidden in here where I could change it. There are some nodes that we can do it that way, um, but the easiest way to switch this to a different UV set is to right click on our, our object, go to UV sets and UV linking. And so what you'll see in here is if I choose file two, which is the one our mouth is on, I'm sorry, if I choose default, it's linking up to file two and checker. So file two is where our mouth is, Checker is the checkerboard. If I tell it I want mouth to actually be what drives file to, then it should change it, and now my character's mouth is showing up on those bottom sections, right? Now, why this is cool is because if I go back in here and set this to image sequence again, if I go into my texture map and say use image sequence, what you'll see is on frame one, we'll see the mouth. On frame two, we should see the smiley mouth. Frame three, we're gonna see the other mouth, right? So we have this, um, this ability to change those one frame at a time, okay? Um, however, that's still like what we have. We have nine mouths. That means our mouth is gonna change for the first nine frames really fast, and then it's gonna stop, it's gonna disappear after that, because there is no mouth 110, so if I go out here to 110, 
the mouse just disappears. Right? Now, whenever we see something in a color in Maya, like image number here is at 113, whenever we see a color there, that means something is driving. What, what does red mean? When red is over a channel, So like we go to our channel box, yeah, it has a shortcut key, or it has a, a keyframe on it, right? So if one of these channels were red, it has a, uh, um, has a keyframe on it. Um, in this case, you'll notice the image number is purple, which means something is driving it. But that color usually means something. Yellow means that a direct connection, like you hooked it up to the connection editor, is driving it. Purple means that a script is driving it, right? Um, did you all have to do a little bit of mail scripting in TD? How many of you have not taken TD? Let me try that. Okay. So you probably had to do a little bit of mail scripting in there. And so that's what's happening here. If you go look at what this script is, which we can, we can click this button. Oh, that doesn't, that's not the best way to do it. Um, let me do it here, go back to that. Now, um, if I right click on here and say edit expression, it's, a, it's an expression, which is the same thing as saying a script, right? Edit expression. The expression is file to frame extension equals frame, right? So there are two ways we can fix that, two ways we could change that. One is we could um, create a um, we can change this script. Right? Um, I can also try to delete this script. When I delete this script, Maya has a bad habit of trying to recreate it. Um, yeah, like, and sometimes I delete it and hook it up something else and Maya will recreate it. So the easiest way to me is to delete it and then just do a direct connect to a controller. Um, but we can also do it in the script if we have to. So, um, I'll show you both ways, and you can choose which way you want to use. Um, I always have to figure this out, though. So I'm going to minimize this. Again, it's this image number right here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the render. Um, so I'm just for sake of a, a, a controller, I'm going to create a little ring out here um, to the side. And this can be our, our face control rig, okay? Um, and so if I go to my channel box, I get all of these values. I want to do edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze transformations. And so any of these numbers could drive this, but I'm going to instead create a new, a new attribute in here. So you probably remember this from principles, modify. We're going to add an attribute. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because currently it's trying to set it up as a float. I want to set it up as an integer, which means it's only going to be a whole number. One, two, three, just like our keyframe, or just like our frame numbers, right? Like there's only, like there's no such thing as image 1.2 that we're going to map in here. We want it to be the number of image. I'm also going to set my default to one and hit add. Oh wait, I got to give it a name. We'll call this um, mouth um, add and so now I have mouth it's set to one right um, but it's not really hooked to anything yet so that's what I want to do is I want to hook it to that frame extension so if I right click on this right frame extension and say um, break connection. Um, the weird thing about this is like once I start adjusting my timeline, sometimes when I go back to there, it will reconnect it. Currently it's not, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and go to Windows General Editor Connection Editor. So there's mouth all the way at the bottom. I'm going to select my character's head here. i got to get back to that material again. So it's right here. It's PNG. Right? I'm going to reload right. And 
it is frame extension, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect mouth to frame extension, and then I'm going to close it. So now you see frame extension is yellow. That means it's being driven by um, it's being driven by a, a direct connection, and that direct connection is the number that is in mouth here. So if I type in three, it'll take me to mouth number three. This is now part of my face rig. The only problem with using a number is that you don't know what three means. Like eventually you'll memorize all of those. There's another way we can do this, um, which is um, by making a um, um, an enum option. So I'll show you this. Um, if I go to instead of a, a flow or an integer here, if I go to modify, I'm going to add an attribute. And the attribute I'm going to make is um, an enum. This means I get to choose words in here, right? And these words are going to represent um, certain numbers. So I think the top one is always zero. So I will say none on that one. And then on blue, I would say smile. Right. Um, or I'd say uh, smile with right add that wait I did oh I'm sorry smile with teeth Add that one so um, I think I can continue to add more here yeah there we go new one we'll say smile um, and then what's my is like a sad I think is next so like, I would have to look at all of my different faces here, but basically zero is sorry, there they are. There they are. on the mouth zero is no mouth at all, um, and then we got smile with teeth, smile, sad um, that's M that's P So it's, we can just keep going through that way um, M click below that P so we have to keep adding in all of the, the ones we need here, right? Um, but let's try this and see if, like, this at least gets us a, uh, a start. I don't know. I'm, I'm close enough. Let me go ahead and finish these up. So MP, um, 01, 02, 03, and F. So let's try that. 01. 02, 03, and F, right? So I'll call this mouth also, and then hit OK. And so now I have this drop down list where I can pick which mouth I'm, I'm switching to. I did this off of faith that I remember this correctly, that none is zero, and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I may be wrong. If I'm off by one, I basically have to delete that and do it again, but this is the test. Let's find out. Um, so again, Windows, um, General Editor, Connection Editor, um, and then it's that material for this face right there. I'm going to reload that on the right. And so from mouth, I'm going to uncheck frame extension. Mouth also, I'm going to do frame extension. Okay, so I think that this may have worked. Let's hit close and see. Because I think right now it's set to none, but if I hit smile with teeth, yeah, smile, sad. Yeah. So now, why this is important, why this is beneficial, is because now I can dial those things in on my animation. Um, and if I hit play on here, you'll see that as I change these, I get this, right? Um, so, this is a nice little way of setting up that face rig, but this is just one of the layers, right? So I need another layer on this to be able to see it again, or to be able to see the eyes, right? So one of the things I can control on here, 
I'm actually just gonna delete this attribute. Um, don't do that. Modify, delete attribute. So I'll just delete mouth. Close. So the next thing I need is the eyes. The eyes would work the same way, right? Like the we just have the two for that: open, closed, and none, right? Um, I'm going to show you one that's kind of interesting, though, because I think one of the other things we need is the ability to be able to move the eyes a little bit, right? Um, like the eyeballs. So I'm going to add a new layer in here again on my material. Oh, I'm on that. Oh, um, so if just wanted to want to kind of show you this. If for some reason that expression, if I couldn't break that expression and I had to wire this in here differently, um, the way you do that is you just change frame to this attribute right here, smile one, so or uh, mouth also. So it's you replace frame in that equation to that right there, nerve circle one, mouth also. Okay. Um, okay. So let's get those eyes in there. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my material. Right click on AI standard, graph the network. There we go. That's that's not it. It's this one. face. Graph the network. So what I need is on this layered texture, I need another layer. So I'm just going to click out here, make my third layer, um, middle click, drag this over to here, and this is going to be those eyeballs. Right? Um, if I click here, file, go back there and look, it's eyeball. So again, that's going to bring it in um just like like randomly on this object okay. um, let's see where it put it on our render view all right so one there's no texture or there's no alpha channel to it so i gotta graph that out again so here it is this is the eye so i just need to go to the channel where that's mapping it in it's like input zero i always like to lay these out in a way that I know where they are. There. So my alpha out is just going to go into alpha. Oh, and then the last thing um, under this layered texture is you need to make sure your blend mode is set to over. And so now we should just get those black dots somewhere here. So Arnold, open Arnold render view. We'll be able to see that it's happening, but we're not really sure where those black dots are. The eyes. Aha, there they are in that back corner, right? Which is not where we need them. Um, so I'm going to do the whole material thing again. Um, I'm going to create a new UV set. Windows, Modeling Editor, UV Editor. And so currently I'm on the UV set of mouth. Um, I'm going to go to UV set editor. And I'm going to make a new one and we'll call this one Eyeballs. Okay. And I want to figure out where I want those. I know I want those in the top part of the face, somewhere up here. Now it's kind of confusing because I'm still looking at my mouth in the UV editor. Right? So since there's all these different textures mapped in, if I click this little drop down box here, I can choose which one I want to see. Do I want to see face, which is sort of all of it together? Do I want to see the checkerboard? Do I want to see the mouth? Or do I want to see the eyeballs? So there's the eyeballs. Currently no UVs for those. So if I go to um, UV, um, planar, um, I can kind of scale these down to where they will show up sort of the way that I want them to, like this. So, um, now again, they're not showing up in our viewport, and to me, this is one of the um, this is one of the weaknesses of this method, is that my viewport here is a little useless, right? When I hit play, the eyes are still not showing up. Um, 
go ahead and hit stop on that. I go to my UV set, UV linking, and I need to say eyeballs are connected to file three. And if I hit play on that now, now my eyes are showing up there. Now, I want to um, adjust where those eyeballs are at any given point. Right? Um, one of the ways I can do that in my place 2D texture for that eyeballs right, is I can adjust my offset very slightly. So 0 0.01 shifts them a little bit. Right? 0.1 shifts them a lot. Right? And that's side to side. If I wanted them to go up a little bit more, I could do um, yeah, 0.1. I can do them up and down. Right? So I can slide that around. I can also do some rotate on that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, let's not worry about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit zero on that, zero on that, zero them back out, right? Um, I can drive this offset value um, with my with my control here, right? So again, I could set that um, in the the connection editor if I wanted to, but the whole the thing about that is is I want that to be a very small increment that I change, right? Right now I'm changing whole numbers at a time. And so if I want to be able to move like that number larger and it implement it, I may, need, I may want to do some multiplication on this. So, um, so let's look at the node view really quickly and then I'm going to be done um, because I think that this is, this will have everything in it you need but is probably exhausting to watch, right? Um, so go ahead and hit stop on this render. The last thing we're going to open up, window, node editor. How many of you have used the node editor before for something? Yeah. I actually love the node editor, but it is hard to wrap your head around. It's really hard when you only have this one screen to show you on, right? So let's sort of set it up over here where I can kind of see it. I'm going to click here and here sort of graph those in and try to see if I can start finding my um, so there's my NURB circle mouth also right so I'm going to add a um, an eye control in here so modify add attribute right and am I have the right one yeah um, so that's where I have my mouth shape changing um, I'll call this I I vertical and we'll set this to float add that and I horizontal add that as well right. and so that means I can move it from side to side again I can connect these things as a direct connect right into um, that place 2D texture if I wanted to. Um, my problem with that is when I shift this I horizontal, you'll see it, it eh, I mean it may work. I can try it. Let, let's see what happens. Um, so let's go ahead and right click here instead of using the node editor. Um, I'm going to go to Windows, General Editor, Connection Editor. Um, I want to reload my left there. So I have I vert and I horizontal. My place 2D texture node, reload right, and it's my um, offsets right here. Right? So we noticed when we were messing with this that um, if I offset U, it's side to side. If I offset Z, it's up and down. Right? So Z, uh, V is, is uh, vertical. So I'm going to do that I vert offset V. I horizontal offset U. And so now when I do this, I should be able to adjust them. Now, here's the thing, is they go really fast. And that's one of the problems I was I was having here, right? Is how quickly that goes up and down by point one. One of the ways you can adjust this without having to do additional rigging is if you hold control 
while doing that. It will do it in um, one hundredths instead of tenths. But if we really want to see um, sort of the way this works and how we can fix this, is in my um, my note editor here. I think it's this one. I always get confused on this. Yeah, there we go. So I get this place 2D texture node, and you see that what it did is it connected my I horizontal to offset U, my I vertical to offset V. And so what I can do is I can just insert a multiply node in here. So I'm going to go to right click and create node. Let's search for multiply divide. Right, I'm just going to create two of those. Actually, I don't even think I need to create two of those. I think there's more than one channel in that. So. Um, ah, what the heck, just to make it clear. So, for this, I'm going to map I horizontal into input 1x. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go from output x back into the u. So now basically I just put this in between there, right? And what it's saying now is that whenever I adjust this I horizontal number right here, um, it's going to multiply it by something in this and then output the result into this offset U. So if I click on this, my input two, that's the thing that it's going to multiply it by. If I click my multiply and divide node here, over in my channel box you'll see that for X, x1, whatever that number is, it's going to be multiplying it by 1, which means it's just going to still be the same number, right? 1, uh, you know, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times... So, if we do some multiplication here, if I did this like 0.5, then what's going to happen is for, if I put 1 in this node, here I'm vert, my, no, I'm doing horizontal on if I put um, 2 in there, let's try that. It's going to multiply 2 by 0.5 and map that into this offset right here. And you're going to see that 2 divided by 0.5 is 1. Right? So um, I can do this. I can make this number a you know, 0.2 or something like that. And now when I adjust this, oh goodness, I, I horizontal it's going to be much more subtle on that motion, right? Um, I can actually do the same thing with this same node. I can use a whole new multiply divide node, or I can just use the Y input here. So I can do I vert into input Y, and then output Y into offset V. And for my Y, I can do 0.2. And now what I have is a rig that should work with that. So if I hit play on this, you'll see it's there. Um, and if I go to my face control here and sort of move that around just a little bit, I can move the eyes from, from side to side to have it looking. Um, I can move them up and down. Okay. Do the same thing with the eyebrows, do the same thing with that eye socket, and you're pretty much done. Right? Um, this, is, this is probably one of the most elaborate face rigs in this way that you can make. Um, there's another method that people use, which is instead of using an image sequence that you're changing which frame you're looking at, they do image... Um, they do an image UDIM, which is a, a sort of like an image sequence, like a, a sprite sequence, and they uh, wire that to your UV channel or your UV transform node shifting to a different part of your image. So it's like a, a 3D sprite sheet. Um, if, if you want to see how to do that one, that's, that's a good method too. Um, if you just go to Chrome here, Uh, and type 2D Maya face rig. It's usually one of these first ones that pop up. It's this one right here, rigging 2D Lego facial expression in Maya. Um, hey everyone, got a Hi. Um, and so you can see what he's done here is he kind of brings it up into 
multiple images with all of the different face has a different mouth to it. And what he actually does is he shifts his UV shell over to that next piece, right? So that works too. Um, a little bit more rigging involved, but one of these methods I think will, will help you um, generate some form of 2D face shape. Now again, my method, the only issue that it really, like it's a little bit more dynamic in what you can do with how these are placed, like how I'm able to shift the eyebrows while well, I'm, I'm also able to shift the mouth placement if I wanted to, like if I wanted to go out here to um, face, go into file two, um, look at my uh, 2D place node here, right? I can, I can change the offset for the U and V here as well, like point two, and I can lower the mouth and raise the mouth even as I'm changing the, um, the numbers. The only problem with it is this, right? Like I can't see it and that's frustrating. Um, there's a little bit of a workaround where you can see certain things at certain times, which is if I go, oh, I'm sorry, this thing's still rendering in the background. Let me kill that. If I stop on this, right? If I go to my, um, my material, let's get this back open here. And see right here under face we can um, we can change sort of how Arnold shows this in our viewport down here under this hardware texturing node and we can choose the texture channel we want it to show however it seems to give us issues every time I try this and so I think that combined textures are, are going to give us the best option um, there may also be a way we can sort of adjust this um, to, to get a slightly better preview but for me what I've what I've been doing is I just open up my render view and it makes it a little more crashy like you're gonna <laughs> Maya's maybe gonna crash a little bit more this way um, because I'm making like live changes to um, to my model here right um, let me set that back to one. That's one. Sorry, one more. Here we go. Um, but one of the one of the cool things about doing it this way, like you you can still have some control over this. Um, what I would do is I would just drastically lower my render quality and size. So if I close this, I go to here. I'm gonna set my like render size to something super small, like 320 by 240. Um, I would set all of these down like pretty low, um, like set these down to like one and zero, right? And so now when um, I'm using this open Arnold render view, like the live preview thing here, um, it it's gonna be a terrible looking image but it should update super quick, right? So if I switch this to sad, like I'm able to see it in here instead of in here. Um, this will stop being an issue in the next version of Arnold uh, because Arnold is now implementing an Arnold viewport setting, which basically means you can just set your viewport here to Arnold and it will, um, it will try to give you your live preview while you're working. I have a feeling that's going to make Arnold cra or make Maya crash all the time, but it's going to be kind of neat. The other thing is if you want to if you want to speed up this render that we're seeing here, like you see it rendered this in less than a second, um, you can choose this render region and just zoom in on the face section here, and that means the only things that are going to update are what's within that box, and so now it's almost like real time, right? Of course I moved that. Um, yeah, so now it's almost like a real-time update that I can see what's what's happening there. Does that make sense? Huh? Tedious. Yes, so you all want to be rigging artists, right? Um, having said that, like just imagine, 
imagine being in a studio where they're like, we have no idea how we're going to do this. And then you go back to your office and you do this and you hand them. Things like here, look, you can make any 2D animation face you want to on this. We didn't have to do a face rig. I did it in an afternoon, right? Um, like this is this is why we do this. This is a unique problem that by solving this tedium means you don't have to do a full character face rig, right? You're able to do still facial animation in a stylized way, right? Um, I also think like it, it has plenty of applications. I mean, I think. Um, Caroline, I think yours is a great example. Like you still want it to look like a photorealistic teacup. You just want to be able to have a cute little face that changes on it, right? Um, and like it's a it's a style decision. Um, and although this rigging is a little tedious, keep in mind I gave you the most complicated version I could on this, right? So what you could actually do is instead of having it broken up into layers, you could just have one layer and you're switching back and forth between different images in that layer, right? Um, or you could also just have like two layers. You could have the, the checkerboard in the background and all of the face on one layer and you just have pre-decided when you're going to make your character blink, right? So maybe you have um, a blink face for when the character is smiling and a blink face when the character is neutral. Right? But you, what that means is you never can let the character blink while they're in the middle of saying words. Right? And so you kind of have to sort of strategically animate it then too. So like there's not like one way of doing this, but I do think that this is a, a really neat um, technique that you can use to, to do a lot of different stuff. So um, hopefully this video makes sense. Um, hopefully this video is recording. Um, let, me, let me make sure. Hey, I think it is. So, an hour and 12 minutes. Look at that. Teaching like a mad fool. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop it. I know you have tons of questions. Really, the only way that you're going to answer them is, is to get started on it and, and run into the problems and then flag me down and I'll, I'll come help you. Uh -huh. You have a problem now? <laughs> okay. Cool, yeah. Right, so, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and upload the video so you'll have a copy of it and then I'll hop around. Um, but otherwise, the rest of the class is yours. Um, so here's one of the things I would say, uh, two things. Um, tomorrow night, come out, Michelle Maynard is uh, talking with Edge uh, in the Skype chat. I think I've mentioned that already. Um, the other thing is, next class period is sort of the last one I have sort of penciled in for animation talks. Um, I mean, I'm not out of things to say about animation by any means. <laughs> But some of it's going to seem a little repetitive if, if I just start coming up here and reteaching old classes or reteaching specific concepts that you've had in other classes. Is there anything animation wise you would like? Like, I know last class we went over um, layers, um, we went over like some procedural ways of animating or, or generating more curves. Is there anything you're curious about or anything, maybe not even animation? Like Andrew earlier asked me about doing a, a spline IK for an, for an arm, and if I could kind of show him that. If, you know, stuff like that stuff that more than one person could use, like I'm completely open to, um, to impromptu lectures, right? Like I, I, I think I can wing most of it. It's not gonna be the cleanest, most efficient lecture, but if there's something specific you feel like you need or you're, you're curious about, like, be thinking about that. If you want to send me an email before next class period, I'll have something ready to go um, to, to show you that. So, um, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Or let me know before you leave class, too, if you have some ideas now about that. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'll upload the video um, for you to fret over in the future. So, thanks.